but the only experience I had with the bench here is that we had a man working in the forge and he, he was, uh, was here with us for 33 years. So eventually he met this woman from Cork and he was uh, going out with her for a couple of years. So uh, they, they decided they'd get married. I'd say he would have been 47 or 8 and she would have possibly been the same, but she taught him that she was, we say, 40. And uh, it went on grand for years. So eventually things, there was no family coming or anything. So things were changing and changing. But um, they lived together anyway for many years, but she got cancer eventually. And she died from cancer. And my son John was her favourite. And the day she was dying in the hospital, John, I had John in us, it was about three years. And she was looking for us all day. But by the time we were home from Ennis, she had passed away. So this is why I think that she, she came back to our place, you know, to let us know. But there was something troubling her, I'd say, because um, on, on the first anniversary, we hadn't, we hadn't even think, I, I don't know, we even think it was coming up to our anniversary. But I, the two, they had just two girls were sleeping down in the bedroom. And around 12 or 1 o'clock, they heard this awful crying outside the window. And they burst into the door into our room. They were so frightened. So, God, anyway, I got up and I could hear it going away up into the distance in the field. You could hear the crying like, you know, which was gone very weak that time. So, we passed it off anyway. But uh, I happened to go to visit one of my neighbours one night. And I was telling them the story over. So they maintained it was Martin cats, you know, that they cry a lot. So we left it at that then, we didn't think about it anymore. So the next year came anyway, and we heard the same thing again. And we were saying, like, oh, it was a coincidence that it was all happening around the time of our anniversary. And then we began to think about our anniversary, oh, her anniversary would be coming up now, you know. We, we always started with then. So on the third anniversary anyway, we were repairing the roof in the house here and uh, I was sleeping down in the room and uh, John was here, John would be about nine or ten that time and he had his friend up from Rowan and they were sleeping upstairs. So about well, 12 o'clock anyway, I heard this awful crying, it made me sit up in the bed, you know. And uh, yes, again anyway, after a while, it stopped and I could hear all this talking. And I said, I didn't two boys awake at this hour of the night, you know, it was nearly one o'clock. And, and um, I passed it off at that. So the next morning then we were at the breakfast and I said to John, what were you talking about last night? I said that you were moving the room at one, or one o'clock. I said, talking. And John said, we weren't talking at all. He said, we were fast asleep. So it kind of, that gave me the shock then, like, you know. And uh, we happened to have a mission in Raya at the time. And we were still, you go that time, you had to go kind of to every morning to the mess at seven o'clock. So I went over to the mess. And it so happened on that day, it wasn't the priest talking about spirits. And he was on about his own father. How he died and when he'd be inside in the sitting room, in the evening doing his prayers and reading the, the Bible, you know, he said, uh, You'd feel the father coming around the back of his chair. So he said then after a few minutes, if anybody here has anything like that happen to them, he said, come in to see me after mess. So by God, I decided I'd go in anyway. And I told him all the story and all that what was happening. So he said, I'll say a mess now for it, he said, and it will never happen to you again. So that was the last that we heard of that when he said the mess. So that's the, that's the story of the bench here that I know about anyway.